Our first speaker is Sean Liu, who's an associate professor from University of Chicago. Um, since she is going to be hopefully telling you a little bit about herself, um, I won't be introducing, giving a bio for the speakers. Uh, she's going to talk about uh, fighting software inefficiency through automated bug detection. Um, okay, thanks. Uh, thanks very much for Mary's introduction. Um, I, I feel really honored uh, to, to be here to tell you something about the research that my group has been doing. Uh, and I'll start a little bit about my, myself. I grew up in China uh, and uh, um, uh, in 2003, uh, I went to University of Illinois and I was very lucky uh, that I had a very, very nice advisor. She taught me a lot. And she also helped introduce myself to other mentors like Kestri. Uh, and uh, in 2009, I joined Wisconsin. Again, I, I feel I'm really, really lucky that I have a lot of very supportive colleagues. And I was very happy there. And then in 2013, uh, my daughter was born. Uh, I was very happy. And about half a year after she was born, I started hearing rumor about Wisconsin is going to give me early tenure. Uh, but at the same time, uh, my uh, my family was uh, I feel like was in a uh, very uh, hectic situation. So my husband has always been working in Chicago, and I was very happy about it because I can work until two a.m. in the office, and I don't need to report to anyone. But now with the baby, everything changed. And again, uh, I was lucky that my colleagues in Wisconsin were very considerate, understanding, and I moved to the of Chicago um, two years ago, and I'm very happy there. Um, and I learned a lot um, through these years from my advice and my mentors uh, and from my daughter. Um, so there was times I feel really frustrated. Uh, and I believe you may have similar situation where with some people with some project. Uh, and I feel like this cannot go now. It's such an evil person, or such an evil project, right? Um, but uh, as long as you put your heart into it, right? Be patient, uh, takes time. Uh, give it time, and something sweet uh, will come out from it. Uh, and another thing uh, my daughter uh, taught me is uh, if you are passionate, if you have passion about something, uh, such as I'm a superman, uh, you don't don't care that much about how other people think about you. Uh, like she just believes that if she puts something uh, around her neck on the back, she will become a superman. And she, she's very confident, and she just do it in public. <laughs> and uh, uh, and I, I feel like that's really something I should learn. OK, so um, so back to research. So today I will tell you something about how we do bug detection, particularly for inefficiency problems. Uh, so I will um, talk about uh, several pieces of work all at high level. Um, so if at the end you feel like, oh, this is easy, then great. <laughs> um, OK, so. I believe you all know um, there are bugs in every piece of software. It's very costly. Uh, and for myself, um, I have been bothered by bugs a lot. I was not a very good programmer. Uh, when I did my internship in Microsoft Research more than 10 years ago, uh, I was told to write a program to process Windows registry change log. I was thinking, wow, you ask a PhD student to do such a simple thing. And then I write a program within one week, and I realized my program used a lot of memory. I did a lot of data structure optimization. One month passed. Um, my program can still only process about, it would go out of memory every hour or something like that. So this is a huge log. So you have to let it run for days in order to complete, complete. And then they send a software engineer to help me to look at my program, because at that time, it's clear that there must be some memory leak. And we spent two days, and we cannot find anything. And then the, the engineer suggests maybe um, just leave it there, and you just hit a restart button um, and remember what's the progress, and then manually restart in the form where um, it worked um, every hour. So I worked until 4 AM every day just to look at the screen to see what's the memory now, how much it has progressed, and hit a restart. And like in the last week of my internship, I finally find out there's a memory leak bug in my program. I was very frustrated. And after I came back, I'm very determined that I want to do research, uh, do good research in, in automated bug detection. And how to detect bugs? Um, at high level, 
uh, it's actually um, to some sense simple. So you first read some real world bugs. Um, there are a lot of online bug database about real world bugs. And then you try to look at this bug and try to figure out what are the common patterns. Um, and then you write some program analysis, static or dynamic tools to try to automatically look for such patterns. Okay, and then a very simple example, like this is a piece of C code, right? We know um, this uh, will go out of bound. So what's a pattern, right? It's very straightforward. Um, you should just never write out of bound. And then you can write a checker. It could be a static checker, it could be a dynamic checker. You analyze every memory access, right? And then you try to find this type of bug. And then there are other more complicated type of bugs. Like I work for I work on concurrency bugs for a long time, um, but it follows a similar thing. You monitor memory access synchronization, find out some abnormal pattern. And then why do we move on to performance bug? Um, so I asked one of my PhD students to develop a concurrency bug detection tool. And then we observed some very abnormal performance problems. Like it works very well for some applications, but strangely works into this like 100 times slowdown for some other application. So we try the profiler, it doesn't really tell us where the time is wasted, right? It only tells you where the time is spent. So my collaborator asked me, hey, you're an expert in bug detection, right? Why don't you um, develop some tool to automatically find um, programming mistakes that lead to inefficiency? Okay, so the first problem, so the first question I had in mind is, Am I really able to do that? Like, at that time, I felt that the only thing I know are concurrency bugs and memory bugs. I don't know about these new types of problems. So, but then after a while, I began to realize, okay, I need to be more confident, right? Uh, the real the question I should ask is, uh, is this an interesting problem? Right, because before you jump into a new research area, it's always a lot of unknown, right? And then where do I start, right? So. So I feel like, okay, I know where to start, right? So we go to the bug data database to see what are the real world performance bugs out there. Um, so we tried it. We tried um, five applications. These are all large applications. And developer actually had some tag in their bug database saying these are bugs that lead to performance problems. And in total, so I have two students. Um, we spent one year um, really, really understand about one, more than 100 bug reports. About this. And uh, we have a lot of findings uh, about what are these um, performance bugs in the real world. And uh, um, I will not talk about um, those details. I will just give you an example about what, what performance bug uh, I, I mean. So here is an example in Apache. Um, it's very simple. So this is actually part of code that, um, that helps initially when you use, when the user input, um, you're supposed to input some password. Get logged in. So this index all that we are seeing is S is the input command line input, right? It will look for a substring, a specific substring in that input string. And if it does not match, the user will input another character, and then this loop will go back again, start from the beginning to check whether there's substring in this input string. Okay? So because this goes on and on. So if you have a long input string, it will become slower and slower and very slow. Right? And this is supposed to be interactive application. So that's a problem. Um, and the patch is, is, is not that difficult. Right? So basically what it does is instead of always check for the substring in the whole input string, right, you only check the last few characters. You only check a substring. Right? Because you already checked, you know my password does not exist in the early input. Okay, so we have a lot of findings, right? We have a better understanding. Now the question is, okay, now can we move on to bug detection, right? Can we, what are the patterns that we found? Okay, at that time, we actually feel this is a much harder problem than we expected. Because we realize for performance problems, the root are very diverse. Um, and we did see that there are statically checkable patterns. Like in this case, actually I can right, write a static checker. Um, for example, I would just check, do you call index all right, with an uh, unchanged pa um, parameter inside a loop, right? 
with the with the strain not changing much, right? Um, so you can imagine we can write a static checker for this. But the question is, um, how do we get this kind of pattern? We didn't really have a, a solution. So at the at that time, I just tell my student, hey, let's just start from everything needs a start, right? Right. So let's just manually extract these patterns from patches. So my student examined 100 patches. Um, some of them do not contain any general rules. Some of them require runtime information, right? Because sometimes the performance problem is workload related. And there are the remaining ones that are statically checkable. So we manually examine the patch, write some checkers, and we did find many bugs. So um, uh, we write about 25 checkers. Uh, about half of them are able to report more than 300 this inefficiency problem in the latest version of like MySQL, uh, Apache, and so on. Uh, and uh, some of them, um, they, they, they were in the buggy version, and they were not fixed uh, together with um, the, the, the similar ones. And then some of them is like, after the bug is fixed, the developer continues to make similar mistakes. And there are also other cases, it's like, uh, you can imagine this index also, Right, because it's library related, so we can um, the developer in one application realize the problem, right? But the developers of some different application are making similar mistakes. So that's good, right? So this was a paper in PLDI 2012. Um, we were happy, but uh, clearly, right? This is um, far from a very useful tool because it's unrealistic, right? To ask some people to manually check every patch and write checkers. So we were thinking, how can we right, build a really, truly automated bug detection tool to find some generic performance inefficiency problem? We thought for a long time and did not have a solution. And when I look back, the problem was we were too um, attached to the bug study we did. And we have seen a lot of problems about using API in a wrong way. And we were trying to do some automatic inference about how to use API efficiently. And that's just very difficult. So after a while, one of a, a student actually said, hey, let's forget about this API thing. Right? Let's go back to, to the low level. Think about what memory access pattern would indicate inefficiency. So that's led to uh, our um, the first truly automated uh, inefficiency bug detection tool. It's a dynamic tool. It was published in Nixie 2013. So we looked at inefficiency in nested Right, because the bug study told us uh, you can imagine most severe problems have a nested loop. And then we go back to some of these examples. Right? Um, it is an API problem about how to use index out. But if you really think about it, there's a loop inside right, that, that is implemented index off. And what is going on is like suppose you have input ABCDFG, right? this index off loop that's inside index off. Right? It will go through every character, right? And then I input just one more character. The index of will go from beginning to the end, right? And then go beginning to the end again. Okay? So if you think about this mem at memory access level, um, so what type of nested loop are inefficient? Well, it's just that every inner loop um, are doing something similar again and again, right? Naturally, that's what inefficiency means. And what does this similar thing mean? Right? Well, it means you keep reading similar values again and again. Because you read similar values, your computations are also similar. Okay? So, uh, like going back to that example, right? you keep reading ABCDEF, ABCDEFGH, right? This is just a little bit different from one to, to another. Okay? So, um, we start from there. Right, then it's, it's straightforward to some extent to build a dynamic checker. We instrument the loop, we instrument keep access inside the loop, and we have a log we, um, telling us what are the values that are returned by every memory read instruction. We do some um, like um, um, diff, right? We do some uh, substring comparison to find out the similarity uh, across um, the different um, to across the memory um, read sequences and find some repetitive map, um, patterns. And um, the evaluation is good. So we knew in advance that there are 11 bugs we knew had this problem. We apply our tool to it, and we find uh, 44 
are previously unknown um, in the fishing loops like this. And we reported to the developer, uh, 15 of them are fixed by developers. Six other are confirmed, when the developer said, I'm not going to fix them. And then there's other, more than 20, that developer never confirmed. Okay, so um, comparing with the profiler, this is good. Um, so if you look at the profiling result, a lot of root cause functions are not even ranked in top 10 uh, because of the noise, also because of sometimes, for example, this function is called, uh, called by some other function and the call chain and so on. Okay, so it's good, right? The paper is accepted, we're very excited, but um, the people ask us, what happened to those bugs that developers do not confirm or confirm but do not want to fix? Okay, this is a little bit embarrassing, right? Um, so it's actually, just, it's easy to understand, right? If I tell you this is a problem that will lead to security problems, right? Developers say, okay, let me fix it, right? No matter how, how difficult it is. If I tell you, hey, this piece of code may lead to performance slowdown under certain workload, right? So developer will think about, okay, are you really sure this is correct, right? Um, do, um, like maybe this will break some uh, code encapsulation, modularity, all this kind of thing, right? Um, so then we were thinking, okay, uh, we really hope that our tool will be useful for developers, right? So can we detect some inefficiency problems? that have a simple patch so that it will be easy to justify. And so this leads to uh, our work um, Caramel is a static checker. It targets inefficient loops that have simple fixes. It was published uh, last year and it got the six of distinguished paper work. Um, so just give you a high level idea, right? So what, if you think about loop, what are simple patch that will fix some inefficiency. Okay, it is. Um, it's you. Sometimes you can just add a condition checking and break out a loop. Right, that's simple. Okay, and to give you a real example, so this code is a little bit complicated. So the high level idea is there's a container. This loop will go through every element, and from every element, it will get a string. It will do a string comparison. If the there's if it match, then there's a a boolean variable already present that's said to be true. And once this, and then the only side effect of this loop is in this, the last statement. It will only be executed when already present is false. Okay? So um, there's a simple fix to this inefficiency problem. Basically, once this already present is true, right, you know that throughout this loop, it will not become false again. So you should break out the loop. Right? So there are many this type of bugs um, in real world. Okay? And then um, we believe this type of patch will be simple enough, right? And it, will, it should be considered uh, important because, because sometimes the loop could be um, uh, very expensive, right? So the question is how can we automatically find what type of loop will have this type of uh, inefficiency problem? Again, we thought for a long time, and my students come up with some very crazy idea. One of the idea is, let's um, synthesize all, pol all valid expression with a certain length, and let's try all of them at every location in the loop and run them to see whether the, the, the output is still the same. Okay, so at the end, we decide, okay, let's be more systematic. Um, if you think about it, right, for this type of loop, um, it can be divided along two dimensions. If you think about where the computation is wasted, sometimes it's every iteration, right? Um, so, um, then that just means you should add a condition at the beginning before you enter the loop. Sometimes it's a later iteration, sometimes an early iteration. And then why the computation is wasted? Sometimes it's because, like in the example I showed you, it's because for some iterations, there's just simply no side effects. Right? In some other cases, it's because you have useless side effect, means, for example, you keep writing the same value to the same variable. And then following this, I will skip the details, um, but we, um, for among these types, there are four types, we can come up with a very concrete static check. Um, like in this example, you first identify what a side effect instruction, you analyze what is the condition for it to take effect, 
and what is the condition for the whole loop to have any side effect. And then we will reason about this condition. Um, um, data dependency analysis, some a little bit of symbolic evaluation to figure out uh, when this condition, whether it's a loop invariant or something like that. Um, and um, we run this tool, uh, it's good. Um, we tried on 11 Java applications, 4 C applications, we find um, 150 new bugs, and uh, 116 of them are immediately fixed by developers, um, and uh, um, including, for example, GCC. Um, there are a lot of bugs there. Okay, so, um, and the first part is really slow. So that's it. Um, uh, and uh, uh, the last thing I want to say is I talked about bug detection, right? There are actually many other similar, um, well, there are many other research you can do in software reliability, you can do some sort of recovery tool, right? you can do sort of diagnosis, you can do automated fixing. And there are different constraints for these different topics, they are all very interesting. Um, so my group does uh, all this work for concurrency bug and performance bug. Um, that's it. Any questions? Yeah, that's a, a very good question. Uh, I have uh, I've not thought about it, although my husband works in high frequency trading. <laughs> so, so we had, we had some discussion. Uh, I think there uh, there were some people there. The um, my impression is they spend a lot of time on hardware, like FPGA speed up, like with the networking or something. I've heard stories about like a whole group are fired because of some bugs in their code, not performance bugs. It's like you just made wrong trading accusation. But that's a good question. Maybe I will ask them. Yeah. That's a very good question. So I would say a couple of things. First of all, um, the the good thing about this is uh, once you get good understanding, right, you have not just one paper or two papers, right. So once you understand, for example, I when I was a student, so we worked on uh, I worked on understanding concurrency bugs. So I spent about um, one year to go through the bug report or the data database. But then this helped me uh, to do research all these ten years after it. Right? And then another thing is, I think this goes back to community and networking. Right? So you're not the only one that are interested in a particular problem. And, um, and um, if you're in an interesting, interesting field, right, um, there will be other teams, groups that are doing similar things. And uh, I think um, it is, I think in our, in our um, academic community, I think there is this good thing about sharing open source. Um, so that's another thing. And then in terms of motivation, it's, I, I can, so one of the students who did the performance, uh, I have two students who right, did the performance bug checking. One of them, uh, he decided uh, to just get a master's degree and leave <laughs> right after we submitted the paper. And uh, it happens, right? Uh, but there are also other students um, who are waiting to continue. And when we submit the bugs and when they are fixed and confirmed, they are extremely happy. 